in some of our previous videos, we had a look at interest rates, specifically nominal annual or simple annual, effective annual, periodic and continuous. In this one, we're going to look at how interest is actually calculated using day count conventions and interest accrual. So welcome. Professional borrowing or lending markets are essentially split up into two segments. There's a market for short-term borrowing and lending. By short-term, we mean up to a year and a market for long-term, in other words, in excess of a year. The short-term end of the market are known as money markets and the long-term end, fixed income markets or probably better known as bond markets. Or if you work in the financial sector, you've probably also heard them referred to as rates and credit markets. We're going to concentrate on the short term end, on the money markets. Now, money markets are basically a market where you arrange short term funding. And it in itself is also split up into a number of subsectors. First of all, there's a market for actually borrowing and lending money, cash. And that is dominated by the interbank market, in other words, banks trading between themselves, and also banks trading with their corporate or commercial clients. Some institutions also issue securities as a way of raising money, those institutions being governments or large corporations or banks. And there's one other specialized area of the market, which is for collateralized borrowing and lending, which are referred to as repo markets. Now we have other videos that cover all these specific segments in detail, but over here, we're interested in working out interest calculations. Let's say you deposit money for one year. You agree the interest rate up front, let's say 5%, and you deposit for the whole year. Now, every day, a certain amount of interest accrues or attaches itself to your deposit. And then at the end of the period, it's all paid out. So if you leave it in for a year, you'll get one year's worth of interest. But very often, you might only want to invest for six months. So the amount of interest that would accrue would depend on the fraction of the year for which you had the money on deposit. And that fraction or that accrual is calculated as the number of days in the period divided by the number of days in the year. So let's say you had £100,000 on deposit for six months and that six month period happened to have 182 days in it. And there are 365 days in a year. So the amount of interest you would get would be 182 divided by 365. So roughly a half, just under a half of 5%. So the actual interest payment would be your principal times your annual rate times your accrual. And your accrual again being number of days for the deposit divided by the number of days in the year or days over base. So far, so good. But there seems to be some sort of unwritten rule in the financial markets that if you can make things complicated, then do that. So as far as interest accruals are concerned, there are lots and lots of different methodologies, different interest, interest rate conventions, whether, it's, whether you're talking about cash, whether you're talking about swaps, whether you're talking about mortgages, or you're talking, talking about bonds. And we're gonna look at just the two major money market day count conventions. In the previous example, we'd used 182 days divided by 365. And we did that because it was a sterling deposit. And the UK money markets use the actual over 365 day count convention. In other words, they'll count the actual number of days for the deposit and divide that by the base days for the year. In this case, it's 365. If on the other hand, that deposit would have been in US dollars or euros, then they use the actual 360 method, in which case the number of days would still have been 182, but this time they would divide by 360 because according to that convention, there are 360 days in a year. Let's see all that in action. Okay, here we have a spreadsheet and we've got to put some details in there. Let's say that you agree the rate on 26th of May. That means your deposit starts on the 26th of May and it's a three month deposit. So it matures on the 26th of, of August. Now, simply by subtracting the two dates, you can work out how many days there are. And let's say you've invested 10,000 pounds 
at an interest rate of 5%. Now, using the UK money market conventions, the number of days in the year, the base is 365. So your accrual is 92 over 365, which is about a quarter of the year. In other words, you'll get a quarter of the interest. And that works out at 126.03. Okay, let's do the same thing, but with a euro deposit or a dollar deposit. So let's reveal everything. Now, another quirk in the market for euros and dollars, etc., is that if you want your deposit to start on the 26th of May, which is the same as this day, you've got to actually agree the rate two business days before. It's known as T plus two. So the value date, the date on which the deposit actually starts, is two days, two business days after you've agreed the rate. Now the rate is 5%, same number of days, but because this is euro or dollar, the base is 360. Now you can see that the interest rate accrual is slightly different, and on the same value, you get a slightly different interest. Now, there are a couple of adjustments that we actually need to make to make it more lifelike. So, for example, we put the money in for three months. So, matured on the 26th of August. The only problem is that's a Saturday. So, what you have to do is push the maturity date to the following Monday. Now, that's going to change the accrual, change the number of days, and therefore change the interest slightly. Okay. Once you know what accrual you're using, the actual calculations of interest are fairly straightforward. And the amount of interest is going to be the amount you, you've invested, the principal, multiplied by the rate, the annual rate, and you multiply that by the accrual, which is a fraction of the year for your borrowing or your deposit. And the rate times the accrual essentially becomes your periodic rate. That's it for this one. In the next one, what we'll do are a few examples, a few exercises, uh, actually, for, for you to try out. So, hope to see you in that one. This has been Abdullah. Thanks for listening.